Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of tic-tac-toe endgames. So essentially uh, we have nine features for each example uh, where the features represent the different spots or spaces on a tic-tac-toe board. Uh, and at the end we have a positive or negative value depending on whether X won or not. Uh, so the possible values in a given uh, column are X, O, or B for blank. Uh, and we're basically going to take the end state of a tic-tac-toe uh, tic board and try to predict the winner. Um, so we're going to use a series of different classification models for that. Uh, we'll use k-nearest neighbors, a logistic regression, a support vector classifier, a decision tree classifier, and an MLP classifier uh, or neural network. So I'm going to use NumPy and Pandas just for working with the data, and then we're going to use the train test split function for pre-processing. Let's go ahead and import those, and I'm going to load in the data using pandas.readcsv. Uh, and I can get the file path over here uh, from this CSV file, paste that in, and we'll take a look. All right, so uh, as you can see, uh, like I said before, we have uh, nine columns, one for each spot on the board, and a final col uh, uh, label column which is either positive or negative. And we can, we can double check that just by going data sub v10, which is the name of the column, dot unique. We can see all the values in there and it's just positive or negative. All right, so let's actually get started uh, with pre-processing. So we wanna make this, uh, we wanna encode this data in a way that the uh, model can use easily. So we can't pass it in right now because it's, it has string values and the model won't know how, what to do with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to one-hot encode each of these columns so that uh, each of them, each column gets turned into three separate columns corresponding to if we have an X, a zero, uh, sorry, an X or an O or a B uh, in that column. So we can do that uh, with a with one-hot encoding. So if we call a pandas.getDummies and we pass in data sub, let's use V1 for example, uh, v1, and I want to get the dummies for this. You can see each unique value has been given its own column, and we have a 1 or a 0 uh, for a given example, depending on what the original value was for the column. So here you see we have all x's, and then on the bottom here we have all o's. That corresponds up here to all x's and all o's. So this is the type of encoding we're going to use, and that will be one hot encoding. Uh, so this function will take in a data frame and a list of columns we'd like to encode. Um, and because uh, because all of these columns have the same uh, kinds of values in them, if we one-hot encode each column like this, we'll have duplicate column names. So it's important that we add a prefix here. A uh, prefix can be the same as the column name, v1, and that will just tell us which uh, which original column these values are corresponding to. So in our one hot encode function, I'm going to start by taking our data frame uh, and making a copy of it. And then once we have the copy, we're going to uh, iterate through all the columns in our list of columns that we're passing in. So actually for column in columns, uh, we're going to create these dummy uh, columns to start. So we'll call that dummies. That will be pd.getDummies. And the column we're, pa we're using is df sub column. And the prefix is also going to be called column, which is just the column name that we're passing in. Then we're going to take these dummies and concatenate them onto the original data frame. So df equals pd.concat. Um, we're concatenating the df and the dummies. And we want to uh, put them side by side, so we specify axis 1. Then when we're done, we can drop the original uh, column from which we created the dummies. So we'd be dropping this guy and replacing it with these three. So df equals df.drop column uh, from axis one. And that, that should be it. So after all that's done, we can return df. And this allows us to pass in a whole list of columns and get back uh, just the, the uh, one hot encoded version. So instead of using this, we'll, uh, let's try doing them all at the same time by taking VF, actually one hot encode, and we're gonna pass in data. And the columns we wanna pass in uh, will be a list of uh, from V1 to V9. Uh, and we can do this 
uh, instead of typing them out manually, it's, I feel like it's easier if we use list comprehension. So it's a V plus uh, the string version of I for I in range 1 to 10. So this will give us back values from 1 all the way through 9. Uh, and then I will take on each of those values, and then we'll get V1, V2, V3, all the way to V9. So if we run this, uh, sure enough, it has actually one hot encoded all of the columns that we specified. We have V1, and you can see there's uh, three columns for each original column. So V1 has three corresponding to each unique value. Uh, V2 has three corresponding to each unique value, all the way to uh, V9, which has three as well. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do is actually uh, set these equal to uh, 0 and 1 instead of positive and negative. So why don't I make a function called preprocess inputs. It's going to do all our preprocessing for us in a nice uh, function. So this is going to take in a data frame and it's going, I guess we'll start by creating a copy of the data frame so that we're modifying a fresh copy. And at the end we're going to return the data frame. So currently this is just going to duplicate the data frame. Uh, so let's call the preprocessed version of data x, and x will be preprocess inputs, and we pass in data. So currently, uh, x just looks like this, the original data set, right? But now, if we include our one-hot encode function in the uh, in the preprocess inputs, um, and we save that in the new df, and we also have to pass in df instead of data. Uh, in that case. So I'll specify these are the columns we're passing in. Uh, then we run this function. It takes in data, which is just the original data, and it'll, sh it'll uh, spit back x, which is the, pre the one hot encoded version. So now anything we have to do pre-processing, we'll just put in this function, and we'll see the result here. So let's just uh, comment this. We'll say, uh, whoops, one hot encode board. Uh, space columns. All right, and uh, the other thing we have to do is change these label values to zero and one. Now, actually, with um, with sklearn, it's not so important that we do this because sklearn actually allows text labels. Um, but there are other machine learning um, pro libraries such as TensorFlow that don't allow it. So I feel like it's always good practice just to convert your labels into uh, not numerical labels. So um, we will encode label values as numbers. Um, to do this, it's quite easy. Uh, we can just call, well, the name of the, the column is V10, right? So we take df sub V10. Uh, and we're going to modify a copy of it here, um, and we're going to call dot replace on v10. So we're taking the column and we're calling dot replace, and the replace function allows us to pass in a dictionary that's going to map the old values to the new values. So the old value uh, negative will be mapped to zero, and the old value positive will be mapped to one. And so this is all we have to do to change the the positives to one and the negatives to zero. So if we run this, you can see we now have ones and zeros on the side here. Um, and once this is done, I'm actually going to split the data uh, the data frame into two parts. So we're going to have here I'll say uh, split split df into x and y. Uh, y is going to be what we're trying to predict. So that's the uh, the v10 column, the label column. So uh, that will be df sub v10, and we'll make a copy of it and store it in y. Then x will be everything except v10, so the rest of the data. So df.drop v10, and we're dropping from axis 1, which is the column axis. Uh, we should make a copy, is this, a copy of this as well. OK, now that we've split the y off from our x, we're going to do a train test split. So this is going to take, uh, it's going to split x into x train x test, and it's going to split y into y train y test. And so the train, the train set, we're going to train our models on, and then the test set we'll use to evaluate those models. So this will, uh, we can use the train test split function uh, from sklearn, which is a fantastic function. You just pass in x and y, 
and it will return back x train, x test, y train, and y test. Um, and then we can also include a train size here. You can also include a test size if you want, uh, but one is implied by the other. Uh, the train size can be 70%, it's a pretty good number. Um, and then we'll also include a random state uh, because this function also shuffles the data for us. And so there's, because there's randomness involved, a random state will ensure that the, the shuffle and therefore the split is always done in the same way. So now we'll have our four new sets of the data and this is what we want to return instead of just df. So we're, gonna, we're also gonna get it over here and we can take a look at x train once that's done. Let's run these. So here's x train. Uh, it no longer has the v10 column. That has been stored in y train. And you can see that both this train, this whole train set of the data has only 70% of the original rows. Um, so over here we had 958 original rows. Now we have 670 in the train set, and the test set should have the other 30%, 288. Um, all right, and so this is ready to be fed into the model. Now normally, um, if you're working uh, with tabular data like this, it's a good idea to scale the data so that each column takes on the same range of values. Uh, but here we actually know for certain that the columns already take on the same range of values since these are all one hot columns. They only take zero or one, so there's no need to scale the data. All right, so let's, uh, let's create our models. So training. Um, I'm gonna make a dictionary of models that's going to map a model name to the actual instance of the model. So if we look up here, these are the models we're going to use. There's like five of them, I believe. So why don't we just copy that down so we can type them in. Uh, so we're doing the K neighbors classifier. So that is K nearest neighbors. Uh, and we'll map that to the actual instance, which is the K neighbors classifier. Then we have logistic regression. And we'll map that to an actual instance. And then we have SVC, so the su support vector classifier. I'll just write support vector machine. And there's our instance. And then we have the decision tree classifier. Decision tree. And make the instance. And then finally, we have the MLP classifier or neural network. Make the instance. Okay. So here are our five models, and I'm actually just gonna add in little spaces here so that they all line up nicely, uh, just so that we can see all the accuracy values side by side and compare their, uh, their performances. All right, so here's our models, and then what I wanna do is I wanna go through each one and fit each one to the train set. So we can call a for, we can make a for loop here uh, for I also want the name because I want to display it. So for name comma model in models dot items. So dot items will return the key value pairs of a dictionary as tuples so that we can iterate through them two at a time like this. And I want to uh, I want to fit the model to the train set. So model dot fit x train y train. And then I want to print out uh, just a little statement that said the model has been trained. So I'm going to use the name print name plus trained like that. Now if we run this, you can see uh, each of the models is trained, has been trained. And now let's let's uh, review the results. So uh, to do the results, it's very similar. We're just going to iterate through uh, for name comma model in models.items. Uh, we're going to print out uh, the name of the model followed by uh, accuracy colon and then format the accuracy value to two decimal uh, places and give it a percent sign and then call dot format passing in model dot score but which by default re this returns a accuracy score passing in x test y test so here we're evaluating the model on the test set and then just plugging it into a formatted string all right, um, and actually I forgot to multiply this by 100 so we get a percentage. All right, and you can see um, our models are performing well, 
Um, most of them are above 90%, but it seems like our neural network is really knocking it out of the park here. So what's interesting is that um, there are still some that are being misclassified here. We don't have perfect performance. So I'm wondering which examples are, are confusing the model, because if you think about it, with, with a task like this, the answer is sort of set in stone. It's, it's written there. The, the model should, especially something as powerful as a neural network, should be able to pick up the patterns uh, exactly. So let's actually go in and see which, which examples is it getting wrong, and what does that look like in terms of a game board. So examining the misclassified examples. Uh, so I'm going to save the, the neural network that we trained in best model. So we can get that uh, just from indexing models um, using the name here. So I'll grab this name. And best model will then be our neural network, taken straight from the list of models. Uh, you can see it's an MLP classifier. So um, if we call dot score on this, you can see we'll get the 90, a 99.31 that we got over here. Um, but what's even better than that is let's call x uh, best model dot predict, and so we only pass an x test here, and this will return back the actual classifications that it made. Now we know that 99.3 percent of these are correct, but there are a few in here that are not, and so I want to know which are not. So I have the y test, which is the actual answers. Uh, if I display that as a NumPy array can see uh, these, these should match up, but there's a few that don't. So I'm basically going to take Y test and check if they're equal. Uh, so these will return trues when they are equal and falses when they aren't, uh, but I'd prefer to see the inverse of that, where it will return trues when they are not equal. So any true in here is going to be an example which we misclassified. And so we can take this, this whole quantity here, uh, and call dot index on it to get just the indices. Now actually I don't want all the indices, I just want the indices of trues within this, this series. So what I'll do is use this true false uh, series as an indexer for y test. So if we call y test dot loc and pass in uh, this as the row indexer and then we want all columns uh, we have a problem. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we don't, since y test is a series, we actually don't need to include the all columns portion, just just the row indexers. That will return just the two examples which it misclassified. So you can see these are the answers to y test uh, for 944 and example 947, uh, which are both zeros. And our model predicted one because it got them wrong. So let's use these indices now. We can call dot index. Um, you know what's even better than this actually? Instead of indexing this in Y test, why don't we index it in X test? So we can see the actual values that it got wrong, I mean the actual board. So here is the board layout uh, for each example it got wrong. Um, so what I'd like to do then um, Okay, so that's why actually it was including all the columns. We we could because this has been one hot encoded. It's sort of annoying. We'd have to like restructure the one hot encode. So what I'm going to do is take our original data before we one hot encoded it, um, and use we're gonna we're gonna index this in the original data. And we have a problem. Oh, okay, don't worry about it. Uh, basically. Why don't we call this hard examples? This is hard examples. And we'll take a look at it again. So here we go. Uh, and then why don't I loc the data at the indices of hard examples? So hard examples dot index, and I'm using the index. Uh, you can see hard examples 
uh, dot index will just return this 944 and 947, just the indices. And we can check those indices in the original data like this. So um, all columns, but using these, uh, this as the row indexer. And so this is the actual original board values for it without looking at this one hot encoded part. So I'm going to call, OK, actually, I don't care about this guy, right, this class. So I'm going to drop that one, dot drop v10 from axis 1. And there we go. Um, so let's call this the new hard example. So I'll just overwrite it because we don't need that old one. Okay, here we go. Here's hard examples. Uh, and now let's just print it out as a actual board. So let's print out difficult examples. These are the, the examples that the model found difficult. And then for i in hard examples dot index, so it's essentially by iterating through the index, we're going 944 and 947 indexed by i. So for each of those, um, we're going to print out uh, backslash n for new line example space and then we want to display the example number which is the index so string of i currently it should just print out the names now we want to actually uh, display the uh, board so what we're going to do is print out the first three on the first line the second three on the second line and the third three on the third line uh, so that means we'll use these three columns first so let's print hard examples, which is this thing, dot loc, the ith row, which is given by the index, which we're iterating through here, and the v1 column. That's going to be, that's going to index this and this, so we get x. Um, then I want to add a space, and then I want to add uh, another one of these, except we're doing v2. And here we're doing v3. We don't need a space at the end. OK, then we'll just grab this. And down here and here, this is going to be 4, 5, and 6. And this will be 7, 8, and 9. All right, let's print it out. Uh, we have a problem. Oh, I misspelled examples here. Oh my god, for all of them I did. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's actually just rewrite that hard examples and grab all of these. Okay, we're gonna grab all of them. So this one, this one. Oh, we can just do this, and we're just gonna replace it. Oh no, I grabbed the loc. Hold on, let me just. Okay, we're grabbing these, grabbing these, and grabbing these, and paste. All right. What's wrong? <laughs> um, syntax error. Did I forget to close this? No. Oh, there's no pluses on this side. OK, let's just add the plus. And there we go. OK, we can see the boards. And what's surprising is that these boards actually have no winner. So we were supposed to be dealing with a data set uh, of tic-tac-toe games that had winners. Um, the complete set of possible board configurations at the end of tic-tac-toe games where X is assumed to have played first. Uh, the target concept is win for X. Um, so I wonder if the, if the target, instead of referring X wins, uh, zero wins, it's actually just X wins, X does not win. Looks like possibly the, the what's going on here. But in any case, uh, we have these examples where x it, neither x nor 0, 1 that are giving the model a difficult time. So it's interesting to see that. And uh, that will sum up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.